in a world crying out for Thunderdome. Thunderdome. The fans have spoken. Two films enter. One film leaves. The top ten gives you a reckoning by the name of Thunderdome. Thunderdome. Brought to you by the Schmoes No Network. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of Blunderdome. Blunderdome. <laughs> That's right. Our signature top ten offshoot, would you say? Well, it's our only consistent one, well, so there we sure. Go. There we you go. can be the signature. <laughs> I can't fight you on that. It's, you can describe things however you want to. Uh, I just feel like this is an offshoot of our show. and yeah. it's... A trash man is also a sanitation engineer on some level. <laughs> sanitation. Sanitation. A custodial engineer as well. Um, anyway, all right. So this week, speaking of custodial engineer, this week we are going to uh, be talking about Street Fighter. It's true. Yeah, let me. I'll pull up the winners. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was what was it? Was it ter- a terrible comic book movie or terrible video game movies? Uh, uh, Blunderdome '90s action uh, films. Jesus Christ! <laughs> By it was either it was one of the. So we have a pair of brothers. The, oh, they the went against us. Oh, uh, the Menchaca brothers. So last week. One Menchaca got picked. I'm sorry. I'm looking it up now. And, yeah, that's and, right. uh, It's George and Ellis okay. with the two Menchacas. Okay. Los dos Menchacas. I like the last name. Menchaca. Oh, yeah. But they were like, they just came up and I was like, oh, wow, brothers. And then so he, he, just, he picked Blunder Dome. He was pretty quick about it. And then I had to email out to uh, the other gentleman thereafter. Menchaca. I dig it. Um, so 90s, so uh, Street Fighter destroyed what the, what was the other one? Do you remember what the other one was? It was Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. Listen, as terrible as Street Fighter is, I would have been going insane watching Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. I saw that once, and I never Me in too. the living hell do I ever want to see that movie ever again. again. So glad Street Fighter won. Yeah. So glad, because but, I I hated that movie, Stop or My Mom Will oh, Shoot, yeah. watching it, going through it. Yeah. And it was after I also hated uh, uh, Throw Mama from the Train. Oh, yeah, Throw Mama from the Train. And they kind of came out for me in my head yeah. around the same time. And I both were just like, I don't like either. I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Is this a trend in movies now? What's happening? This Yeah, this shit sucks. Yes. Yeah, so anyway, so this one is... Uh, uh, so, I'm sorry. It's Elvin yeah. Chaka chose it. And then it was okay. John Douse and Gil Reyes. Uh, those are your two other people choosing, and uh, I want to say Gil had Street Fighter. I okay, look that up too. Well, congratulations, Gil. Um, this was—I've uh, never seen this movie, and I'm—I've seen uh, it in bits and pieces. I'm a massive Jean Claude Van Damme completist. Yes, and so this is well, one I completist resisted. is strong. I'm a fan. <laughs> For me, I'm a completist. I've what? seen. Well, I haven't seen any of his straight to DVD movies. I, I avoid those, but every single one that was released in so the theaters. So you're a release completist. Yeah, I remember really, that's right. A release completist. If it was released in the theaters, I saw it. Um, the Quest was when I stopped watching his stuff in the movie. That's when I was like, okay, we've we've crossed the line. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't go back anymore. These are terrible now. And uh, but this one, I yeah. Well, you brought up. Can we use our veto for once? And, yeah. And then like a ha behind it or something like that. And I was like, nah. I, I know what you mean, yeah. man. Because you know what? They chose two terrible action movies from yeah. the nineties. Good yeah. for you. You guys you guys read the the play correctly and <laughs> called it you read the defense and said this is what we gotta do, a little, yeah. little slant across the middle there, oh. you know. They're rushing the linebacker. Done and done. Yeah, well, I feel like I just got to, uh, hit by uh, what's his face's forearm with the cast. Yeah, from the jump. So yeah. Street Fighter that was the thing I going into it, watching it for this. It's like did did the game Street Fighter have a story? I didn't. The second one it. did. The second one did. Okay, which is what this film is based on is the second film. And by the way, oh, second game rather. The story within yeah, the second game. Yeah. By the way, this will blow your mind. The film made three times its production budget. This is a successful. What was this production? Ten million. Thirty million. million. What made ninety in release? It made ninety eight million worldwide. 
98 million worldwide. It is not a fail- failure. Yeah, the, when this came out, financially, yeah, 98 million dollars is. Yeah. I'm sure that's worth an extra 20, maybe even 30 million now. Yeah. It's incredible what it did. Yeah. Um, the Van Damme in this, obviously. Uh, He's uh, phoning it in. Oh, so Lord. hard. Lord. So hard. Raul Julia is actually, I still enjoy him. Yes. I still enjoy him. He's the only one yeah. that every scene he's in, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I, I know you realize this is a bad decision, yeah. and it's somehow not affecting you. You're just having fun. Yeah. And you know what? This is the thing about the great actors, dude. The great actors love to do cheesy shit. Hopkins isn't cheesy shit all the time. Uh, Francis McDormand isn't cheesy shit all the time. They love to do this kind of stuff. I'm sure Julia uh, Julia died two months before the film was released. He was suffering with stomach cancer. They pushed up the production schedule so that they could get him get all these scenes shot before uh, before he died. Hmm. That's gothic as fuck. That's like that's dark as fuck. But they did that so that it could keep him in the movie. Now he was probably having a blast. He's like, look. It's he- it's hella funny that this will be my last film before I die. I bet he loved the joke of that, the life joke of that. I've I've won an Oscar. I've been in these incredible movies. I'm I was in the Adams Family, which people love to pieces. Both those films, yeah. And I have a great legacy as an actor on stage and on screen to my community, the Latino community, and just to the world at large as an actor. And Street Fighter is going to be my last movie. And but no, he's one- such relish doing the role. He's so good at it, though. Yeah. I mean, he is consistently the only part. Yeah. It's amazing how bad Van Damme in the, is in this. Yes. It is amazing because I've seen him still be good in yeah. terrible movies. Yes. He's always been consistently like he can do this and deliver this line. And yeah. He looked lazy in the fight sequences. Yeah. The delivery of lines like, you know, this this uh, this is this war isn't your personal vendetta. You're right. And then Chun-Li walks out of the room and he turns it's mine. <laughs> wow, man, this is bad. I, I yeah. don't understand. Uh, like f- from the beginning, so I didn't know that their set in Bison uh, runs the land of yeah. was it Bandaloo? Chandaloo. 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 Something like that. Yeah. It just reminded me, it sounded like a scat singer song. Skip to Maloo. Chandaloo. 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 Perfect. Oh, 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 it's around the world. It's the around the world. Shadaloo. Anyway, Shadaloo. The fucking. We get introduced to Ryu, and is it Ken is the other? Yeah, something like that. I mean, did you really want to be accurate about these character names? No, no, I can remember most of them from the game. Like Guile, yes. uh, you got M. Bison, Sadat. Sadat, um, yes. Was it Vega? Is Vega the Clawed one? Yes. Um, and then uh, Zhang Grief. What is the Russian dude? Zhang Grief. That's the, great. You got the sumo dude, the boxer dude. I, can remember, I can't remember their name. Yeah, the boxer dude. Because it's not Piston Honda. That's, uh, no, uh, that's Mike Tyson. Uh, Chun-Li is the Ming-Na Wen character. Yeah. Um, Ryu. Zangief Balrog is the boxer, the black boxer guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, DJ is the the dude who's like got the weird Jamaican accent who's helping uh, Roll Julia, the the black dude from yeah. Juana Man. Uh, so what? Also Vega. another Blunderdome Scooby Doo not long ago, I believe. Th- that's true. He was. Yeah. Vega. That's right. Sagat. Uh, and I think that's. Oh yeah, I said much Sadat. It. No, it's yeah. not the former. It's not Ann dictator. <laughs> well, I think that's where they got the name. Sagat, it's so close to Sadat. <laughs> so funny, man. Um, and it's so funny to see Andrew uh, Brynarski as Zangief because I remember him from like the program and um, yeah, he uh, was Hudson Hawk. He was in these, he always popped up in these he was o- he's like next generation ogre. Yeah, totally. Like nerds. absolutely. This one is just Russian ogre, like you know whatever <laughs> non bisons. <laughs> And so the introduction of Ken, he looks like a Dave Coulier on Full House. The way they dressed him, right? Maybe it's the year he came out, and that I don't know where they were in the ratings on that show. But he, I mean, I'm not even kidding. They dressed him oh, in a yeah, full Uncle Joey. You know what that is, right? Though, right? Is Damian Chapa? I know who it is. Yeah, from Blood In, Blood Out. From a bunch of terrible movies. That motherfucker was badass in Blood In, Blood Out. But like in this film, woof. 
all over across the board. Nobody is good, but except Raul Julian in this film, and everybody's terrible. And, and the Indian doctor, although the guy you just brought up, the Jamaica dude, yeah. and the Russian dude, they were fine. Yes, they were funny. They were fine. Yeah, yeah, because they knew what they were in. Yes, exactly. Um, the Indian doctor is Nehru from fucking Gandhi. I was so mad to see him in this movie, man. I was like, "You are above this this shit. What are you so, doing in this film?" Dude, so he's working on uh what is that character's name? Like Berserk or yeah, some something shit like that. that? That's Char- his friend Charlie who gets turned into that. Um Pseudo Hulk. We were watching this I was like, it, the literally the first thing that came to mind is like, "Oh, he's making that multi-armed guy." And I was like, "Oh, no, that's Mortal Kombat. What are you talking about?" <laughs> um because that to me is kind of what the movie is like. Oh, it's it's Mortal Kombat ish. Like you're fighting, yeah. you fight, but I don't remember there being a story. I just remember playing my friends. Yeah, I never played on like a battle like story mode or any shit like that. But when him and Guile get introduced later on, mm-hmm. a character I I think he was in that video montage right before they got there. Yeah. But had they ever fully expressed who this dude was? No. You don't get introduced to anybody yeah. except for Raul Julia and uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. But so when they you meet and he instantly recognizes yeah, yeah. the dude, and I was like, did I miss something watching this? Because I have been lazy. There, you know, there are a couple of times where I pulled out my phone. And well, of course. It's impossible. Impossible not to. I'm trying to undersell because I do take my time. When you also ask me to watch this, if, fuck you if you don't also pull at your <laughs> – at certain points, you're just yeah. like, I know exactly where this no, entire next scene is yeah. going. I don't even look I'm up. Gonna, I don't have to. Yeah, no. I don't have to. I get it from the dialogue. <laughs> now, yeah, and the over-explanation as to what's going on. <sighs> like the squibs. I knew I knew that. How, Staging Jean-Claude Van Damme. your death. It's so hilarious. I know. And then Bai said, oh, I would like to have seen him on the battlefield. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> the thing, the film is... Tries to be unnecessarily complex. Like it just makes no sense. These yeah. incredibly uh, uh, has no these, sense of identity no, itself. Not at all, man. Not at all. It's not even like enjoyably bad. That's the thing about the film. And I, I didn't have a terrible time watching it, but I certainly didn't have any enjoyable time watching it. And I like. I don't mind enjoyable bad movies. Me too. Bad bad movies. I just they just drive me insane. I, I mean. I they put so little care into the world. Yeah. Um, so the, everything to do with Chun-Li and the other two. Yeah. Balrog and what was the other dude's name? I don't remember. The He's, Samoan guy? Yeah. The, the, yeah. well, no, he was Hawaiian. Oh, Hawaiian? I think he almost became, uh, the head sumo. Yeah. Uh. Wrestler, but then he got run out by some underworld, whatever, uh, by Bison somehow. Damn, I'm sorry, man. I can't, I can't remember the guy's name right now. Um, uh, anyway. Yeah. They, she gets away from them after she's been captured. That the whole line with like, "This isn't your war. This oh, is mine." Honda, right? Isn't that his name, Honda? Oh, was Honda? Okay. Yeah, I um, think that. Yeah, because that's the guy who plays the Manu Manu in uh, in. Uh, I know the actor. I just remember the roughness. Name. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so she gets away from there, and yeah. that, the the story then cuts to M Bison's. Like Sultan moving caravan, I assume Genghis Khan traveled with this type of, yeah. <laughs> and tents would set up around him as because he was a nomadic ruler. Yes. So as you're moving <laughs> the campaign further along, this huge structure kind of comes with you. Right. It's this racist bazaar. <laughs> it is with all these Middle Eastern characters. Like, what do you want, hear your jet? What uh, you want, hear your no, no, no. You want uh, this heat seeking missile, <laughs> buddy, what buddy. Um, this is not what you're looking for. You know, you want something else. You want something else. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a PA speaker apparently saying, hey, welcome to M. Bison's whatever. Yeah, it's so weird. Enjoy yourself while you're here and enjoy the world-class entertainment. And they <laughs> end up being the inf- entertainment. No explanation as yeah. to how they infiltrated, nope. how they suddenly have this act. Yeah. They threw together an act. Yeah. The three of what? They just got this in their back pocket at Where'd all times? Why would you set that up? How would you set all that up? It's nuts. Oh, the, the circus. You guys have a circus act. Yeah. The squib is at least understandable. Well, I suppose you're right. Yeah, the a circus, circus act. act. Yeah, the three of them have a choreographed on some level. It doesn't matter how long it is. Yeah. If it's two minutes, if it's twenty minutes, <laughs> you still have at some point gone. Okay, when we get in there, guys. Yeah, this is going to be, and we do this, and then a barrel on your belly, and I hit it with something, and it cracks <laughs> in half, and everybody golf claps, and right, a fucking ridiculousness. Yeah. Do they set up a bomb and then somehow there's a camera shot of the van coming in to relay yeah. live to the bomb for them to? And I was like, I don't fucking understand. It's seven layers of ridiculous, man. It's it's, it's really just sad. the laziest on top of lazy, on top oh, of yeah. stupid, on top of dumb, on yeah. top of 
And then you cast Kylie Minogue. <laughs> so here's the story behind that, to be honest. Here's what happened. Uh, they spent almost half their budget on Raul and Van Damme. So they had – there was $8 million, I think, for Van Damme. Fucking million. Sounds about right. And I think it was four for Raul. So right there, you're left with 20 million, and you got to fill out the cast and shoot the movie with that budget. So, like, that's why they got, like, people like Kylie Minogue. Because the reason Kylie Minogue is because they had to have an Australian actor because they were shooting down in Australia. So they wanted to have an Australian actor to kind of, or an Australian person to connect the fans with this kind of thing and blah, 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 because they're shooting on the Gold Coast. And Kylie Minogue was the one they chose, who I guess had been big with some song around that time. Yeah, uh, and it's, so or she, she's certainly big in Australia. She was always big in Australia. She's huge in a ton, ton of other places. Yeah, she's yeah. somewhat broke here. Yeah, never really like broke broke. A couple of times, like she had that locomotion remake in the eighties, and then she had a couple of more she like synth pop songs. Yeah, that like the came early out 2000s? in the two thousands. Yeah, exactly. Can't, That's I just what I can't get you out of my I, mind. I don't remember the eighties. I'm sure I know the song, but I can't even mm-hmm. visualize what the video would have been. Well, with 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 which which one? Locomotion. Yeah, locomotion. It's just her with a bunch of her friends with her curly hair, like dancing around doing the locomotion in like some cheesy eighties club or 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 coffee shop or something. It's just weird video. But the other two songs are actually good. Love at first sight, which is fantastic, and can't get you out of my mind. Those are cool little like synth pop stuff that's really great. But like, yeah. So she's been big for a long time, but like. Her in this movie was so weird, man. Because she's gone to act on a bunch of other things. Did you notice when they went to M. Bison's uh, lair, him yeah. and Chun Li, when he insinuates that he's going to rape her? Yeah. Uh, honestly, it's I, uncomfortable. They after the racist, you know, swap meet. Sure. Uh, I, of course, you make a, a rape reference. Yeah. Why not? Although it seems perfectly natural for a guy that is lived in this little echo chamber for so right. long, and he. You know, and he's gotten all this power and et cetera, et cetera. That's how he would rule the world. Well, listen, man, you, you watch a lot of these comedies from the 90s and 80s. There's a lot of refer- rape jokes that are thrown in there. So um, which we kind of glossed over when we were uh, younger. You, but I, like yeah, now you go back to the 70s as oh, well. Sure. For some of, of that, too. Jesus, of course. But did yeah. you notice there was one distinct piece of artwork? Did you notice it? of himself? Yes. Yeah. The, the John Wayne Gacy piece. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I know. That's it was so strange. To do an M. Bison version yeah. of a John so it's like a Rockwellian uh, uh where you sit down and it's the the photo of you, yeah. you know, where they do an image of themselves off yeah. a reflection and whatnot. And so that is M. Bison doing himself and how he internalize like visualizes himself yeah, and projects yeah. it onto the world. Yeah. As John Wayne Gacy, I don't remember that from the game. <laughs> I don't remember the fantasy, like the fantasy of wanting to be a serial killer so bad that yeah. that's how you identify. I don't either, man. I I'll saw that honest. and I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> and it, like it's exaggerated, so it almost seems like it was done at a fair. Kind yeah. of, it's not yeah. quite that far, but it's not like yeah. a, a Gacy's. I think he tried to be more flattering to himself, and this is more jokey. Every room feels. Uh, so tight, so small. Yeah, small sets. Yeah, and and it, it, even that prison or whatever where they're throwing the the the, the people down into the um, that pit down there with the opening. Like he's snapping necks from the f- opening minutes. <laughs> no, like just, what the fuck is going on? Grabs him. Nope, not nope. for you. Like <laughs> you traveled all this way to kill me. <laughs> but how much fun he is having in those scenes. You instantly are like, well, I like Raul Julia already. Absolutely. Everybody else can suck it. I was kind of cheering part. for him the whole time in the movie because everyone he, else sucks. He's the only one that's doing anything that I, I that I want to see. Yeah. Everybody else is either uh, stone or yeah. doesn't understand what they're doing. And uh, yeah, because the interaction with him and his and the uh, essentially his friend henchman. Ass- assistant, whatever that Miguel Nunez guy, yeah, like lieutenant. Yeah, it, it's so funny because when he's going, just you and me, we are going to take them all on, and he's like sneaking out the door behind him and all this kind of shit, which is funny. So you have these occasional funny moments, but, like like the healthcare uh, um, over the intercom, making sure your healthcare is is taken care of before you leave into battle. <laughs> he's like, what? So uh, just really weird movie, man. Yeah, yeah, just it's strange. Every which way, man. Yeah. Every which way was just like, uh, wow, it's conveniently we got to here and conveniently we got to here and can, over and over. So, yeah. so Guile can just take 
the army? I guess so. They can volunteer. Oh, and they can volunteer all that equipment and all yeah. those bullets. Yep. And the man hours, they can just do that. Yeah. Uh, I, the the authority above them says no, and this is an insurrection. <laughs> this is a mutiny. They can yeah. run off and just kill somebody. You don't think that there's political ramifications. Like, if you're bringing a U.N., then you have to respect the reality that that brings into the story. Yeah. Well, they didn't at all. If you're just going to slap it like it's a neutered dog, which this country kind of does at times. Right. Um, but it's not for comedic effect. That's what's so weird. That's what's so strange about the film. Like, they got good actors to be in this. And you can't just say it was a paycheck because they didn't have a big budget. Like, Wes Studi's in this. What is Wes Studi, Dances with Wolves, Wes Studi, Heat Wes Studi in, in this film? He's good in it as well. Yeah, well, that's because he's a good actor. He's doing what he can. Well, but I'm saying his character actually makes sense. Sure. Each time he's there, like when he gets double crossed with the yeah. bison dollars, right, and his reaction and whatnot, and getting out of jail initially when he's like, "I mean, I can get you out of the city alive." Yeah. That is worth something. Like he figures out his worth. That's why he's gotten to his position. He's yeah. managed to. He's just that good. Yeah. Self preservation is strong with this one. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so I liked him in it, but yeah, it is a weird. He doesn't get cast all that often. Yeah, no, I know, and it's a crime. Like I saw Hostels last. Yeah, he's incredible in Hostels. If you haven't seen Hostels, Nost, you would love that movie. It is. No, I know a bunch of people that recommended it. I was yeah. busy at that time, and it just kind of fell by the wayside. F- a fine time to watch it, man. It's a two, over two-hour Western, but it's a fucking poetic Western about what happens between these guys, and it's pretty hardcore between them, uh, and then how the journey of what they're doing. It's a dark, dark fucking West. pulls no punches. From the opening minutes, it pulls no punches. So I would rec- And he's great in it as the dying Indian okay. chief. He is great in, in the film. But yeah, but you have West Studio. You have the Indian guy from, from Gandhi. You have Roald Julia. Uh, you know, you have these actors all through this thing that have credit, incredible credibility, and here they are doing this, this stuff. So it, it, was a, it was a pain to get through. But, but that being said, because I know the game to a degree, it was funny to me to catch the characters popping up and them yeah. saying their names. And, and to see, like, the oh. Characteristics. With most of them, they did. They tried to honor the character, yeah. and Guile looks nothing like. Yeah, not even close. Once they got Van Damme, they're just like, "Fuck it, we'll we'll try and exactly. focus on everybody else." Yeah, and make them look more like their Those their girls. avatars on screen. Yeah, uh, or on the. I mean, Ming Na Wen is in this thing. Ming Na Wen is still working on Agents of Shield as a series regular. This is accomplished actress, both on stage and screen. And here she is being in something like Street Fighter. She's terrible. Oh, yeah, I know she's terrible. She's utterly movie. wooden. Yeah. Because she knows. She goes, this is, a, this is just for the paycheck. I'm going to do what I need to do here. Well, I think she was off. so young yeah. that it's an early job and this is a stepping stone. Sure. Although it's kind of impressive because usually in those, when you go back and look, uh, they're the best thing in it. And yeah. you understand why they're still working to this day. Right. Like there's a great character actor when we did uh, – uh, oh shit! What was it? Uh, like B movie? Oh yeah, we did B movie. Uh, Roller Ooh, Boys. Wow. Yeah, one Roller of the Boys. Roller Boys was excellent in it. Uh-huh. And there's a re- he's a character actor, but uh, you've seen him in a million things. Like I, I can pull it up as we're having this conversation. Wow. But he's always he's always good. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like they uh, he doesn't get asked to do beyond whatever we've seen him in movies. Right, right. I think he could carry it, but he's uh, he's always been good in uh, them. So usually, like someone like that, her early on, you can see mm-hmm. the seeds of. There's going to be dividends paying off in the future. Right. So just buckle up. <laughs> this one could actually act. And you see her. She's arguably the worst. Oh, no. Well, it's between her, Ryu, and Ken, I think. For yeah. The, those are the three worst. Those, are, those guys are She's bad. pretty terrible. Yeah. She's not good in the movie. I don't deny that. Uh, but neither is Van Damme. Van Damme's not good in the damn movie either. My God, he's terrible. Yeah. It's, it's beyond phoning it in. To him, it was, it, it, he's just like, how, many, can, how can I be in less scenes... And how can I like just do a kick every every time I need to do a kick and then I'm out? It was bad. Uh, Mark Pellegrino, you know, Pellegrino, great name. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know that yeah. guy. So he plays one of the. Oh yeah. One of the roller boys. Yeah. That uh, it's actually you, like you understand like he brings a fully formed character right in the midst of this utterly horseshit film. Yeah. And his, you're like, huh. I, 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 he understands that what he's doing isn't the right thing, but right. it's kind of a means to an end, and he's not vicious about it. And like all through really good performance, that dude still works yeah. to this day. Yeah, he's still he was a good actor then. Yeah. So you expect something like that, you see her, and you're like, I'm amazed she got another shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's a pretty woman. 
She's you know, they'll give you shots gorgeous. When you're She's, I mean, beyond wooden. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a fan of hers. Yeah, I know. I know. So to see this, yeah. I hope she watches it and be like, yeah, that was, I was early and I yeah. was a first big job and it seemed so weird and I knew it wasn't going to be good. So I didn't know how to act on a set like right. that. And now she's worked long enough. I'm sure she's been on other things, which is like, yeah, I don't know what we're going to get out of here with. Yeah. Because <laughs> you work long enough. That's got to come up. And uh, it's yeah. not like there's a lot of roles for Asian actors either. So you True. take what you can get and, yeah. and do what you can with it. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully it's like a underground hit. And this was, you know, did decent. Did it made three 98 times million. Part. Can't, can't argue that. And you know, I, I just always wonder why they can't get these video game movies. Right. It's phenomenal to me. Uh, I mean, Jumanji in essence kind of that's counts, cheating. but no, it's a little bit of that's a cheat. Cheating. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible how they can't seem to they consistently can't get these video game movies. Right. And I still haven't seen that actually. The and, new Jumanji. Oh, you haven't? Welcome I've seen the jungle. opening 20 minutes and then I had to leave my house. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to watch it again. That's good. That's uh, all I've heard. Everybody across the board has been like, it is surprisingly good. Rock is great. Um, but like, yeah, with something like this, you're just like, they, they didn't give a shit. There's Capcom was apparently all over this. Like when they were shooting it and they, they had to prove had to approve every little thing apparently and before it was shot and then they pushed like i said they pushed up the production schedule the fights you see they were supposed to train for like weeks and because of raul julie's stomach cancer they moved every th- production so people were training for their stunts and their fights hours before they were going to shoot them not days okay well hours. that explains because even van damme looked sloppy yeah they're doing a bunch of like tighter shots than normally because normally you pull the camera back and watch yeah this guy do something really physically impressive to behold on yeah. you know on celluloid and uh, they were doing tight and I, I just assumed it was because of julia you can't do the full because he's not oh, really right. a stunt man yeah and to know that this uh that he was dying of stomach cancer at the yeah. time which has yeah. got to be so painful yeah Maybe he was on so much painkillers. That's why, like, he's his, he's got maniacal, wide open eyes, like at all times <laughs> yeah. throughout. I just thought he was helping sell the mania of the character. Maybe it's also like I'm so high to get over the pain that is in my stomach right yeah, now. That's a good point. I hope not, because uh, that means that he was in so much pain he had to be on that that amount of. Well, some people just like to work, man. And Michael Jeter was dying through, um, uh, uh, through open range. He was dying through open range of cancer. He just wanted to work. Man, some people, that's a respect that, dude. I respect that in the long run. People who actually legitimately are actors, like the purest form of actors, which is they'll do it no matter what, you know, and they don't care about the treatment. They don't, obviously, they want to be treated well, but they don't care about it necessarily 100%. They'll keep coming back to do stuff. They'll take these jobs. They'll be on these weird sets. They'll get up at four in the morning or three in the morning to drive to a set just to be on set. They just, they, it's, they love it. Yeah, and some people are. It's in their blood so deep that they just they don't care if they're diseased or if you'll give them a job, they will work as they're dying. See, I understand that if it was theater, because of the reaction with the audience, sure, sure, and the intensity of that. Uh, whereas, I, you know, but at the same time, I haven't uh, shot yeah a career's worth of movies or TV shows right, and right. know what it's like to be on set or be in a remote location for three months and yeah. you're just living there and doing this and living this and what that's like. Yeah. Like I remember uh, seeing not too long ago with the, has the Russell Crowe divorce auction happened yet? What is that? Divorce auction? Oh, you haven't seen that? What? No. Are you kidding me? No. What is that? So he's getting a, he's gotten a divorce, I guess, with his wife. In real life? In real life. Okay. And to pay off, like the debt that he owes to her or whatever the case is, or just he's getting this this stuff in the divorce uh-huh. and he's doing a big Sotheby's, I think it's Sotheby's auction. What? And there's all kinds of stuff. I, I've watched a couple, more than one video on YouTube. There's announcements on... What? It's on, t- it's on YouTube? Yeah, you can find it on YouTube because wow. he's done videos for it. Like he's selling a bunch of different watches and he's like, I bought this one at the completion of Master and Commander. Oh, and it reminds shit. me of that. And I was like, oh, yeah, you would like to mark the occasion. Of course. And he's like at the opening for um, what was the movie that RZA did? Wasn't it RZA? Oh, oh. The martial arts yeah. inspired. Uh, but he was in that. And he's like, with I, Iron Hand or Iron, yeah, iron Fist. Like, yeah, Iron Fist. Something like that. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I bought this and it's like blinged out. But he goes through and he's selling all he's got uh, his athletic supporter from uh, Gladiator plus oh. one of the swords, the sword from the tiger fight nice. scene. Does and he have the boxing gloves from Cinderella Man or something? He might. Or the trunks, Dude, I mean, it's, he's walking through an area where they've set it up like a museum. Wow. And it's just like this lot 
When is the auction? I don't know, but he's selling it all off, man. There's tons of different stuff. He bought a dinosaur skull at a, it's a, like a charity auction. And he outbid, I think, Leonardo DiCaprio for it. <laughs> so weird. And man. there's a Grammy that he's got. Oh, it can't be for Les Mis. I know that. No. Wow. I don't believe it's his. No. I think it's Johnny Cash's. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but so weird. That's up for sale. And that's sad. Yeah, or maybe Johnny Cash just didn't care. No, no, I mean for Russell to be selling all this shit because to pay off his... I don't know if it's to pay off or maybe it's just, uh, you know what? He's I don't need all this crap. Yeah. yeah, maybe. I, it reminds me too much of her or yeah. I'm just I'm making a change and I don't need all the stuff. I so have more than enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can possible. see that because now you got to move all that stuff. Wait, exactly. You're just accruing stuff. Yeah, that makes no sense. It doesn't after a while. You're right. Uh, anything else we want to say about Street Fighter, Matt? <laughs> we spent 30 minutes on this damn movie. No, no. To uh, the three people involved uh, was Ellis Menchaca and John Dows, Gil Reyes. John Dows was stopping my mama shooting Gil Reyes, uh, picked Street Fighter. Yeah. All three of you made good choices. These were two crap <laughs> 90s films. And Menchaca, Menchaca said, I think after his brother did a positive last week, that he came in with the negative. Oh. Um, you Menchacas. Dude, Dude if there's a third Menchaca in the claim, Whoa, guys. Oh, a third Menchaca. I don't know if we have a third on the, the Patreon that level. Guy, if he's not, I don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, what's your problem? That's the weirdo in the brotherhood Missing there. Menchaca brother, what's your problem? Or miss, missing Menchaca's sister. Maybe it's a sister. It sounds like a Don Quixote follow-up, the missing Menchankin. <laughs> Menchankin. <laughs> It feels like something. How do you connect that to Don Quixote? I don't know. Uh, uh, the, uh, La, the La Mancha. Sancho. Because it sounds like La Mancha. We it's must a, go find the missing Minchaca, La Mancha. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a Quixotean type of character to me. That's how I visual, visualize the Minchacas. <laughs> I know nothing of them. No, neither do I. <laughs> but oh, that man. very well could be the case. That's great. <laughs> Sancho, we must go get the missing Minchaca. Uh, anyway, all right, so that's our blunder dome for uh, this week here on the Top Ten Show. Thanks to everybody who donates to the Patreon. Listen, we, Matt and I, could not be more thankful and happy and, like, just moved by the fact that you all want to keep supporting the show the way you do, and it keeps growing every month. Thank you so much. As Matt has said numerous times in the last few weeks, we are told, we, we have crossed that line, so now we are, things are in motion to get T-shirts, get things done, a lot of merch out there, Cafe Press, numerous places. I don't know where we're going to go, but there's certainly a number of places that we've been exploring and doing stuff with, so so thank you, thank you to everybody who has helped us since we came back and really put us on the map. And uh, there's some other changes that are probably coming down the road for us as well that we're exploring. So just stay tuned for things to kind of uh, start moving in an in a even more powerful uh, direction for this show. Yeah, and what um, all we ask of you is uh, retweet us on Twitter. Yes. Or help start the dialogue there or on Facebook. Um, suggest, you know, potentially the group to a friend that you think may like the show. Yes. Not to everybody in your list, but if you know one person that likes movies, yeah, uh, just help us grow. That's all that we ask, whichever way you can do that. If you're not a social media person, I'm not sure. Yeah. Tell a person <laughs> on the street. Do something. Get the word out. Uh, we will continue to make this, and we're happy to do it. Yeah. You guys are an awesome fan base, and we can't thank you enough for all your support on uh, Patreon at uh, the, the $20 level and uh, up. And everybody on there, yeah. whether it be the shout-outs or the people, uh, at whatever level you're at, the, it doesn't really matter. Uh, all that matters is our thanks yeah. to you, to the listeners, to everybody out there. So my name is uh, Matt Nost. You can follow me at Matt Nost, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-S-T. And my name is John Roca. You can follow me at the Roca Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And, of course, the other shit I'm doing at Collider. A lot of fun there. Um, <laughs> Boom. A lot of fun there. <laughs> a lot of fun there. That was a hard sell right there. No, a lot of fun I mean, there. I mean, <laughs> Which is at the end of a long day, but the shenanigans, guys, that I can't tell you about <laughs> that I've heard. I can't especially, even... especially now the Snyder's come on. Oh my god! Um, well, that's it this week for the top tens blunderdome. Blunderdome.